Welcome to your weekly UAS News Update. This is the week of July 25th, 2022. We'll be working on four stories for you today. One is the DJI leaks. There are three of them that are leaked right now. One is the Avada. One is the Inspire 3 and, of course, the Mavic 3 Enterprise. We'll be talking about that a little bit more. The NTSB released an update on a very large UAS crash, so that will be talked about in a little bit. And really cool story, lifeguard used a drone to save a person. So they dropped a life, a life vest to him, and that was really neat. And then there's going to be a new FAA safety course available coming up. And, of course, just around the corner is the commercial UAV Expo. And the first story this week is the DJI, well, a bunch of updates, I'm going to call it. And uh, we have the DJI Avada, which is a drone that we've talked about before. And now it showed up in FCC filings this week, along with two other products, which is interesting, the DJI Goggle 2 and the O3 Air Unit, O3 being OcuSync 3. This is what appears to be the successor to the DJI FPV. According to the registration, the Avada has a 2420 milliamp uh, battery. And then there's no word yet on the launch date, but uh, because it's in the FCC database, we know it's kind of right around the corner. Uh, this drone is kind of interesting. It's, it looks like it's, uh, it's a slightly smaller drone maybe than the DJI FPV. I'm sure they've learned a ton from the DJI FPV and then they're going to come up with something, uh, something really interesting. So we look forward to uh, seeing it and seeing what it's going to look like. The other rumor that came out is the DJI Inspire 3. Now, we've talked about it before as well. There is new leak photos of it. Uh, it's expected to have the Zenmuse X9 camera, which is what we've seen on the Ronin 4D. This is a camera that's available right now. That's a monster. Uh, it's an 8K camera, 75 frames per second. It's got OcuSync 4, which is the, the, the newest technology from DJI uh, to transmit the image. Uh, it's got timecode sync, which is really cool if you're using that kind of tech. I know we do here in the studio. And then it's got built-in built in, uh, uh, ND filters, which also I think is really cool. So uh, we have links to all these rumors on Drone Excel if you want to go take a look. And then the last one is the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Now, this is not so much of a surprise. We know that DJI came up with the Mavic 2 soon after they came up with the Mavic 2 Enterprise and then a whole bunch of different other versions. But uh, we've previously reported on this after an April Fool's joke from DJI. Uh, the, the photos, and actually Billy Cal was the one that looked at this and said, you know what, this could actually be a real drone. And then they're just putting an Easter egg in the middle of uh, April Fool's joke. Uh, it looks like it's got, we've seen leak photos now of the Mavic 3 with what looks like a Matrice 30 payload or something of the same uh, caliber. It's rumored to have a 3 to 1200 meter laser range finder, which is what you see on the Matrice 30 a 24 megapixel one, one inch CMOS sensor, a three to 16 times optical zoom, and then up to 300 of a hybrid zoom. Again, like I said, go take a look at the uh, Drone Excel articles if you want more information on this, but uh, we're always kind of excited about new drones and uh, it looks like DJI is gonna, well, give us what we like. Okay, next update is something we've talked about before. This was a large UAS crash. Now, this is not a small sub-55 pound drone. This was a fixed wing aircraft that crashed in California. Uh, the pilot, we found that the report on the NTSB website, the pilot reported that the aircraft was on the third spraying mission of the day, and then uh, they completed a pre-flight, they updated the previous mission, and then they went off and, and, and took off in autonomous mode. Uh, they climbed to around 125 feet, made a left turn, and then and the pilot noted that there was some unusual behavior, which is never good during the turn. And then eventually what happened is that the skin on the right wing separated completely from the aircraft, taking the flaps out and the ailerons out. Now, if you know anything about fixed wing aircraft, they don't fly really well when that stuff happens. So the aircraft rolled to the right, lost altitude, crashed to the ground, uh, the pictures are interesting. Uh, you can see it was a bit of a, a bloodbath, uh, <laughs> not literally, but uh, drone blood. And uh, the battery caught fire after the crash, but it actually didn't spread anywhere. So we'll put a link to the NTSB report if you want to take a look at that. Uh, there's a ton of really good information, by the way, on that NTSB website. If you're ever looking for uh, any kind of accidents, if you want to learn, uh, I used to do this a lot as a student pilot, just to find what other people did to get in trouble. So I didn't do them. So uh, again, just a good place to look. Another good news, this is drones for good type of news. A Spanish lifeguard saved a 14-year-old from drowning off of a beach in Valencia, and the drone dropped a life jacket, and it's really cool, as you can see on the video playing. Um, 
they, they, they kind of lined up right on top of that, that uh, 14 year old and then dropped the, uh, the life jacket and then they were kind of holding it there until he was able to get it. Uh, that gave enough time for the swimmers to go and, and get the, uh, get the kid out of the water. So, uh, drones for good. We always love having these stories and, and sharing them uh, with you guys. And the last story is Commercial UAV Expo is right around the corner. Uh, I'll be there, Don will be there, Jason will be there, and also our friends at DSPA, uh, Vic, uh, you saw in the introduction, uh, will be all attending. Uh, this is a pretty big expo. This is actually probably the most important commercial drone event uh, of the year. Uh, the expo has 193 exhibitors at the moment. Uh, they're actually expecting to have more than 200 on the floor. And that's a 50% increase over last year. Uh, last year we were attending as well. Uh, it was a bit light on the attendance but right post COVID so that's also understandable. Um, we look forward to seeing you. I know there's going to be students out there. Uh, we met quite a few of them last year. It was really exciting and then we look to uh, seeing all of our friends uh, from the industry and, uh, and yeah just having a good time and we'll be reporting on what happens at uh, Commercial UAV Expo. All right that's all I have for you this week. Like, subscribe, leave your comments and I want to say a big thank you to Vic uh, for, uh, for joining me on the news update and doing the intro. Uh, Vic say hi. Hey, hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week.